Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another video. And today I was thinking about my favorite champion, Steven Stone. The man loves stones, the man loves steel, but could he actually beat a hardcore Nuzlocke in his own game? That's what we're going to find out today in Pokemon Ruby. His appearance and hair may say that Steven is a pretty old man, but he's actually only 25 years old. And at this rather young age, he is also one of the strongest trainers in Hoenn. With his pretty diverse team of ground, steel and rock types, he should be able to walk through the entire region without many problems, right? The problem is that he does have a lot of Pokemon that evolve at a high level, so we're going to be stuck with a bunch of unevolved Pokemon for most of the game. Before we jump into the rules, let me know what your favorite champion is and also why, and the rules that we are going to be using for this challenge is the regular Hardcore Nuzlocke rules, but I'll be able to give myself Pokémon that aren't available regularly for me, like Beldum and one of the Fossil Pokémon, because we do want to use every single one of Steven's Pokémon. Also, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, because we're trying to hit that 250,000 subscribers really soon, and without any further ado, let's jump right into Pokemon Ruby as Steven Stone. Of course, there is only one name that we're going to be able to give ourselves, and that's Steve from Minecraft. Plus an N. We then decide to save the professor from this dog that is actually a hyena, and I also gave myself Aeron as my starter Pokemon, because I normally would have given myself Beldum, but he would not be able to get past Roxanne on its own. So the second best choice would definitely be Aaron because I saw him with one in the anime a couple of years ago. After saving the professor, I give my Aaron the nickname Short Arm because tell me that this does not look like an arm. I can never unsee it. It will always be an arm for me. I also decided to give Mei Mudkip because he will definitely be giving me the hardest time out of all three starters. But right now we can just tackle him to death because he basically can't touch us. We then help Wally capture a future waifu, even though it's male, and we waste no more time, we're heading straight to Roxanne for her first gym badge. But since none of her Pokemon have any ground type moves and only normal and rock type moves, they physically cannot touch me. So I'm just metal clawing my way through Geodude and Nose Pass without taking too much damage, and this way we can easily gain ourselves our first gym badge already. The mayor then gives us a free phone, and of course we're never going to complain about free stuff. But nothing is free in this world, in order to get the phone we have to first deliver a letter to ourselves. After doing so we get the TM for Steelwing, which nobody can learn except for Skarmory on the team, so we're going to have to wait for him. And after crawling through this dark hole that's called a gym, we eventually challenge Brawly. I also added Beldum to the team for this gym battle because I felt like Aaron might not be enough. But I did decide to start off the battle with Aaron and go for the headbutt on the matchup first turn. Luckily getting a flinch? And on the turn after, my Metal Claw also got myself an attack boost while the Machop just went for Leer. He then used a potion and two more Metal Claws can take out the buff, whatever Machop is supposed to represent. The next Pokemon is Makuhita and I just go for the Metal Claw twice in a row once again because he went for a bulk up and didn't even bother to hit me with Arm Thrust to kill me. So luckily Dumb AI was on our side this time which meant that we can now gain our second Gym Badge. Honestly, if any of his Pokémon have just used some fighting type moves, my Aeron would have definitely died. We then go to the museum to look at some boat art. After doing so, we then evolve my Beldum into a Matang and decide to take on the supposedly hardest rival battle in this entire game. May here starts off with a Shroomish who goes for a Stun Spore on the first turn, but luckily I gave myself a Cherry Berry so that I wouldn't get paralyzed and just easily take down the Shroomish with two Metal Claws. One of them also gave me an attack boost, which means that we can one-shot Numel with a takedown. Then the big threat comes out, Marsh Tomp, and if this thing goes for a much shot, it's going to do a lot of damage, but luckily it just goes for a Bide, which means that we can once again use two takedowns to win this May battle. And the next battle we're involved in is with Watson. For this battle specifically, I decided to learn Rock Smash to Hercules, which is the only attack that's super effective that I can learn to him right now. At least super effective against Magnemite and Magneton. And luckily we can actually take out the first Magnemite with only two Rock Smashes because my second one was a critical hit. But sadly enough, we are paralyzed. 
He then went into Voltorb, so I stayed in with Matang and hit two Confusions, also paralyzing myself a couple of times. And eventually, I knew I had to switch out into Aeron because the next Pokemon Magneton has Magnet Pull, and I want to be up against Magneton with Aeron, not with Matang. So once my Oranberry activated, I swapped in Aeron, he went for self-destruct and that basically did no damage to me. The last Pokemon was Magneton and if this thing just went for Shockwave, it definitely would have won this battle but it went for Sonic Boom and then missed a Super Sonic and another Sonic Boom because of my accuracy lowerings with Mud Slap. So with a little bit of RNG luck, we also win this battle without losing anyone somehow. On our way to our next destination, we also stop by a grandma's house to sleep and keep sleeping because she will always ask if you want to sleep more, which is kind of weird. I also decide to capture a Skarmory, which I name F16, which is pretty fitting since it's some kind of jet. We then go to Meteor Falls to see some more gang wars. Kind of feels like I'm back in GTA. And after this, we go to the top of Mount Chimney where we have to battle the red-haired dude, Maxi, again. I also don't really get why Maxi does have red hair and Archie doesn't have blue, but I guess that's one of life's greatest mysteries. Anyway, Matang could easily take out the first Pokemon Mightyena with some Rock Smashes and then finishing it off with some Metal Claws. And one of them also gave me an attack boost going into the next Pokemon, Camerupt. Camerupt luckily went down to only 3 takedowns because he decides to use Focus Energy instead of an actual attacking move. And for the last Pokemon Golbat, I decided to switch in Skarmory, which was not the smartest thing to do. Aeron definitely would have been a better matchup. But I just kept on stealing away at the big bat until it died, but it also confused me and even got me down into 10 HP, which is very scary and that also means that we made a lot of mistakes in this battle, but we learned from those. So let's take these mistakes and go into the battle with Flannery straight away. One of the battles that I was definitely the most scared for. That doesn't mean that the first two Pokemon aren't going down very easily though. Since they're just Slugmas, Aeron can definitely take both of them down with only a single Rock Tomb. And Aeron is also the only one that can withstand one hit from Torkoal's Overheat. Luckily for us though, the Torkoal just kept using Body Slam and Flail and didn't even use Overheat once. If he just would have gone for Overheat two times in a row, he would have killed my Aeron and there was nothing I could do about it. But because Flannery is definitely not the brightest soul here, we can just Rock Tomb, Rock Tomb, Rock Tomb this big turtle and eventually finish it off with a dig. With this gym badge in hand, we can now get a couple new Pokemon, so I pick up the Root Fossil with Cradley, which will be very good against any water types that come in our path. And I also capture myself a ground type Beyblade in the same desert as I got Lilip. After grinding up these two team members though, I could move on to my father. That's not fully true, I actually totally forgot to resurrect Lilip and I overleveled Baltoy by one level so he's not going to be able to be fighting in this next gym battle. Which doesn't really matter though because our steel types are definitely going to be able to take some hits from Norman's normal types. Anyway, Norman's first Pokemon is a slacking at level 28 so our Aeron is going to have to put in some work here. He puts me to sleep a couple of times with Yawn. So I decided to just go for Dig and eventually my Aeron actually runs out of Digs before the slacking goes down so I have to finish it off with an Iron Tail and a Metal Claw before he brings in another slacking and I decide to go into Skarmory for some reason. And he goes for Focus Punch which does more than half of my Skarmory's health. Luckily though I just start spamming Steel Wing shortly after until the slacking faints by a critical hit and he then brings in his final Pokemon Vigoroth. For this Ape Sloth, I bring in Matang and just Metal Claw it to death. And that's, I want to say, easy 5th gym badge, but we did have a little bit of trouble because I decided to swap in Skarmory into a Focus Punch, which wasn't smart. I then finally decided to resurrect my Lilip and name it Seaweed. We then skip through the entirety of the Weather Institute because it's totally not hard to complete that. And nobody really cares about cast form now, do they? Which means that we have another May battle on the list. She still has a Shroomish at level 29, why has she not evolved it? I don't know, but our Aeron takes it down with some Iron Tails. But we also got Leech Seeded, which only left us with 31 HP. So I just swapped out into Matang, which took down the next Pokemon Numel with a couple of Confusions. And for the last Pomp, Marshtomp, I decided to just go into Skarmory and kill it with Air Cutters, because Marshtomp really couldn't touch my Metal Bird. After the battle, we get the HM for Fly, but our Aeron also evolves into a Laron, which is a nice upgrade. 
Before we can enter the 6th gym though, we have to have another conversation with ourselves and also get a very cool pair of binoculars so that we can watch and kill invisible chameleons. After this, we then go to Winona, who has become one with bird Pokemon, apparently. So let's swoop her back to the ground, shall we? Our Laron goes up against her Swellow, and we just one-shot with Rock Tomb. She then brings in Altaria, so I know I have to swap here. I go into Skarmory, because Altaria really doesn't have anything for Skarmory. And just three Steel Wings later, and the big Cloud Bird is dead already, but we also got hit with some Dragon Breaths, which left us with 64 HP. Her Pelipper then came out, I was able to hit two more Air Cutters before having to swap into Matang because I didn't want to take another Water Gun and potentially die to a big Pelican. So Matang actually went for a bunch of Confusions on the big Pelican and managed to bring it down into Red HP twice. But she just kept on using potions and water guns and confusing me, so I knew I eventually had to swap out when I was only left with 8 HP, so that our boy Seaweed could finish off the Pelican with an Acid. With the last Pokémon being Skarmory again, I brought in Laron and Rock Tombed it into Red Health, but then I didn't really want to risk losing Laron, so I swapped in Beyblade and ultimately finished it off with Sidebeam. After receiving the Gym Badge and going a little bit further on our journey, my Baltoy also evolved into Claydol, and we want to enter the department store, but May is blocking the way. So Laron just has to lob some big stones at the Swellow to kill it, dig the camel once, I also brought in my Marsh Tomb Killer Skarmory to kill with some Flies and Swifts. She then has a level 32 Shroomish which still hasn't evolved, so we once again kill with Fly. After this we see the ground people going underwater with a submarine, beat up Tabitha before he became fat, evolve my Nileep into a Cradley and my Laron into an Agron. And with all of this preparation completed, we can now go to Moss Deep City to fight Tate and Liza. But this really wasn't much of a fight since they only have a Soul Rock and a Lunatone, which are both weak to Steel type moves. So in two turns, we managed to kill Soul Rock and Lunatone with Metal Claws from Short Arm and Hercules. We then get the HM for dive so we can go under the water. We also found a pool of lava with some burnt chicken in it. And we once again have to fight the red haired dude Maxi in order to stop the world from dying. He still leads with his Mightyena, which is very original. And he also has the Intimidate ability, which is not great for my Aggron. But he decides to just cancel it out with a Swagger, which means that we now have plus one in attack. And after hitting some Iron Tails and Metal Claws, the Mygiena easily goes down as he then goes into the Camerupt. So I just swap in F16 to go for a couple of flies in order to take down Camerupt as well, but we also got hit with a bunch of Rock Slides, leaving me with only 58 HP. The last Pokemon is Crobat, so I swap in Short Arm again and go for the Rock Tomb, leaving it with only a slither of HP, but I then start hitting myself in my Confusion way too many times, and he also flinches me with Bite a bunch of times, so I ultimately just swap in Matang and finish off Crobat with Psychic, win against Maxi, and then go to the final city where we meet up with the big red Godzilla, which I run away from because I don't want it to kill any of my Pokemon. After this encounter, we go to the final gym leader, Wallace, which has Water-type Pokemon, which would normally be pretty hard for me to deal with, but since we have Cradley on the team, this shouldn't be any problem. We start off by setting up three Amnesias on the first Pokemon Love Disk, so that we have a lot of special defense to take all of those Water-type attacks that Wallace might throw at us. After setting up, I then kill the Love Disk with Giga Drain, proceed to then kill the Celio with a Giga Drain and some Strengths. After taking care of the Big Fat Seal, we go into the beautiful Schnick Milotic, which we confuse first turn. We hit a Giga Drain, then a Strength, it hits itself in its confusion, and we then take it out with one last Giga Drain before he goes into Wish Cash. The Water Ground type is absolutely not going to take a Giga Drain to the face either, and the last Pokemon will be Seeking, and since we ran out of Giga Drains, we are going to have to kill this thing with some Strengths. And of course, a Confusion on top of that as well. We then gain ourselves the final gym badge and also the ability to climb waterfalls with tiny little Pokemon like Water Mouses. But before we can actually take on the five strongest trainers of this region, we have to take on Wally at the end of Victory Road. He has an Altaria as his first Pokemon, so we start off with Short Arm and just kill it with a single Rock Tomb. Sadly enough, we missed our first two, so we got hit with a couple of Dragon Breaths. But ultimately, he goes into Roselia so I can swap in Matang and kill that thing with some Psychics. I also decide to stay in for Delcati, hit one Psychic before getting put to sleep. So I go into Agron again and kill with Iron Tail. 
Magneton gets destroyed by a single dig because of course four times super effective. And for Gardevoir I first miss an Iron Tail then start metal clawing away but it might have been too late already because it set up two Calm Minds, eventually hit me with two Psychics, left me with four HP but Aggron still came out on top with that metal claw. I definitely should have switched into Metang though. Once again a really bad play on my end. Now we only have the Elite Four and Champion before us and I decided to add Armaldo to the team. I think it's finally time we bring out the big guns. Our Metang also evolved into a Metagross which is very nice. And since we now have a couple of powerhouses on the team, we can go ahead and take on the half bald man who specializes in dark types, Sydney. He leads with a Mightyena, so I'm going to be leading with my new boy Armaldo here. I hit one Brick Break, but don't take him out because of the Intimidate lowering. He then uses a Potion, and I miss my next Brick Break. I get hit with a Crunch too, one more Brick Break and Metal Claw later. Sadly enough, no attack boost for me, but the Mightyena is finally down. The next Pokemon, Sharpedo, decides to swagger me, but I'm now at plus one attack, so a single Brick Break kills. For Cacturn, I decided to go into Skarmory because I didn't want to risk hitting myself in my confusion. I got Leech Seated, but still killed with a single Fly again. For Absol, I went into Metagross and just killed it with a single Meteor Mash, but it got pretty scary because if that would have missed, he would have probably done a lot of damage with the Sword Stance boosted anything. The last Pokemon is Shiftry who uses one Fake Out, but that's it. One more Meteor Mash, one more win. Let's move on over to Phoebe. And I totally forgot to give my Metagross my fourth attack, so I'm going to be giving him Shadow Ball for this fight. So of course, I'm also going to be leading with Metagross then. She leads with Dusclops, and I just go for the Meteor Mash, turn 1, get a critical hit, and immediately kill it. She then brings in another Dusclops, so I go for the Shadow Ball this time, getting another critical hit somehow and killing once again. The next Pokemon is Banette, which we can also one-shot with Shadow Ball, then Sableye is a one-shot with Meteor Mash, and the final Banette is once again a Shadow Ball. This is and probably will be the easiest Elite Four member, so let's move on over to the Ice-type one, Glacia, which also so shouldn't give us too many problems. She leads with a Glalie and I'm going to be leading with Armaldo and a single Ancient Power is already taking the big head down. She then has one of her two Celios, which I take down with another Ancient Power. The second Celio doesn't fare any better, once again killing it with a single Ancient Power. Walrein actually outspeeds my Armaldo and hits me with a Surf, leaving me with not a lot of HP, but it didn't one-shot, so that's good. But sadly enough, our Ancient Power doesn't kill this time, and it actually gets it into Citrus Berry range. Which is good, because now she isn't going to be using a full restore, so I can just swap in Metagross and kill with Meteor Mash, and taking a Surf like a champion. Glalie gets Meteor Mashed in the face as the final Pokemon, and with that out of the way, we have already defeated Glacia. Let's move over to Drake, the coolest Elite Four member of any Pokemon game fight me. This doesn't mean that I'm going easy on him though, I'm immediately bringing out the big gun starting off with Aggron against his Shellgon. And this Shellgon easily goes down by an Iron Tail and a Metal Claw, he then swaps in Flygon and I'm expecting an Earthquake here so I can finally use Claydol, I'm pretty sure this is the first time he gets used. But he will actually be very useful in this battle because I learned him to TM for Ice Beam. Which means that we can just one-shot Flygon, he then brings out another Flygon, which means another one-shot for me. The Celamance also goes down by a single Ice Beam and then the final Pokemon, Altaria, as well. You know, Drake always be cool and all until you bring out the Ice Beam. But since we've now defeated Drake, we only have one more trainer in our way and that's actually ourselves, Steven Stone. Let's see if our team can beat his team without many problems. I decide to lead with the same Pokemon as he does, Skarmory, and I just set up three layers of spikes so that any incoming Pokemon from him take a lot of damage. After doing this, I decide to swap in Claydol and just kill this Skarmory with three Ice Beams, but I also got hit with some Steel Wings which did a lot of damage. He then brings in Aggron, so I swap in Armaldo while he goes for the Solar Beam. The next turn he actually outspeeds me and hits the Solar Beam. Luckily his special attack is really low and that doesn't really do anything against me, and we manage to kill it with a single Brick Break. He then brings in Cradley, first it takes the Spikes damage and then I hit it with a Brick Break, sadly enough not killing, so I get hit with an Ancient Power, leaving me with 71 HP, 
He then uses a full restore, I use two more brick breaks and the big green plant is down. He then fights fire with fire by bringing in his own Armaldo and I don't want to take an ancient power to the face here so I swap in seaweed which takes it a little bit better. I hit a Giga Drain and then finally kill with Ancient Power. He only has Claydol and Metagross left now and he swaps in the right one, Metagross. So I decide to fight fire with fire myself this time, bringing in my own Metagross, taking a Meteor Mash pretty well and then killing it the next turn with a critical hit earthquake. I'm pretty sure a regular non-critical hit would not have taken this thing down, but I'm pretty happy with this result. He then brings in his Claydol, his final hope, I go for the Shadow Ball, sadly enough do not kill, he sets up the light screen, which was a dumb move on his part, I can hit one more Shadow Ball and win against myself. And just like that, we have defeated Steven Stone with Steven Stone. But don't get me wrong, this was not my first attempt. I attempted this entire run 17 times because I just kept on dying on certain points in the game. But I'm not going to show you all of those bad runs because that would just be a waste of time. I'm also very sorry for not uploading for three weeks straight. I was dealing with a lot of personal issues and also got a copyright strike on one of my YouTube videos which didn't really help the situation. But don't worry about all that. I'm back now and I'm back to making videos every single week. So let me know in the comments down below what you want to see next. As always, I once again want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for the support. If you want to help me out yourself, you can click the links in the description, it's always appreciated. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo and I'll see you guys next time.